right so the first method that i want to implement is this create method and what i want to do in this create method i want to take whatever user column whatever column like for example or user column wants to take that in i want to instantiate it and i want to check that it's actually implementing that interface which we will be doing because we are extending you know user column we're extending that abstract data column which is implementing that interface so we can add as much columns in our application as we need as we want and as long as we're implementing that are extending that abstract data column class then we're part of that family right so i'm going to create a next property to store that object in so i'm going to say this data column object equal new data column string which is the variable from the constructor argument this right here now i'm going to check that it's an instance of data table column interface so if it's not an instance um, which is the data column object instance of data column Data table column interface, then we're going to throw an exception. That's going to be a throw new base unexpected value exception. I'm going to pass in the first argument that says data column string. Data column string, I'm going to say is not a valid data column object right something like that now i want to fetch that columns method that we define if i bring that class back up let's close some of these out for now data column within this abstract i want to fetch this particular method which is the method that we're defining in our user column so because i want to get all of this array within our data table so we can loop over it to build that table so i'm going to say this data columns equal this data column object and we need to get that columns method just like that right and i'm going to create a next property called sort controller and I want to pipe it to that sort controller argument within this create method. Just say sort controller just like that. Right? And I've only got one more one more argument to deal with, which is this array data repository. But I want to create that outside of this create method. So I'm going to create a different method called um it's going to be a private, let's make it private function. I'm going to call it get repository parts just like that and i'm going to pass in that array argument which is going to be data repository and this is going to return void because it's going it's not going to return anything it's just going to be listing out or assigning properties to some values so let's call that method in to be this get repository parts and pass that argument in just like that and because we're returning self up here it's a changeable method we need to then return this at the bottom just like that and the next thing i want to tackle is this sort controller i actually want to define where these are coming from and how i've initially done this i have done this um as a yaml configuration file so i'm going to create a yaml configuration file within my config directory and say controller that yaml right and the reason why i've called it controller is that all my controllers are all the controllers within the application um directory can actually define the default values or the default um key value pair within this controller so we're going to pretend that we're working with a user controller even though we've not got one defined we're going to pretend that we've got a user controller so i'm going to say user 
and within that user control i'm going to define these arrays that we need uh, that we can use to manipulate or override some default stuff so the first one i'm going to create is one called additional query Ad or additional conditions and what this is going to allow us to do it might not be that helpful in a production world but in a development world if we're coming to develop we can modify that query as it comes to our data table we can do some modifications with it and, we, and this is where we're going to be doing it from and we're going to assign assign it to an array we could pass in conditional values in or conditional logics in um, to manipulate that data the next one is going to be selectors and by the name by by the name that we're given you can tell that it's related to our query so this is also something we could pass in the selectors that we need are the are the selectors that we want to display in our data table again they're all optional they might not be that useful in a production environment but for development we can use these to test certain things and the next one is going to be records per page now we can define records per page on a controller by controller basis but at the minute we've got a default value which is quite hard coded but later on we're going to we're going to be making this dynamic so we can actually change this from the actual ui right next one is going to be query and this maps to the query column in our users database right so we can query we could query by the status and we've got four status i think in our users table and that is active pending lock and suspension and we could query that database by that query are we going to use that status column right we got filter by now this relates to our search so we can search via last name first name email etc and by default we said we're going to be searching via last name so we're going to create an array and put that last name in we could also put the first name and we could search via either a last name or first name but for default by default we're all going to be set in one key the second one uh, well the next one in the list is going to be filter alias and this is going to represent the name the name attribute that's going to be in our text or our html input right and we're going to set that to search the next one is going to be sort columns and that's going to return an array and we're going to define the array in yaml like this so to be first name to be created at and so to be modified at so by default what we're doing we're setting the columns that we want to be sortable within our data table so these are going to be the, the default sortable columns right so that's pretty much all we're going to be defining for our user controller and you can imagine if we've got different controller we can pretty much just come into this yaml config file copy that paste it in and just rename that to whatever controller we've got or whatever controller we're going to be using these configurations with so for the time being we're going to be defining one as an example to help us build out this data table component so that's what it looks like i'm going to be referencing this back and forth so you can see how i'm using these key values right so let's just close that for now back into our data table class we've got this get repository parts which is taken in that data repository which is an argument within this create method so the idea behind that is for each model i actually also want or i actually want that data row for each of the columns right i need that data row so we can do stuff with it so that's essentially what this um data repository is doing but this is coming from a method that we've not yet implemented we've created a method but we've not implemented the code base and if i take you back to my liquid orm that data repository let's get that data repository class right if i scroll down you'll remember that we've created 
a method that we've not implemented, which is this find with search and paging method. We've not implemented that. Are we going to implement it now because we need it in order to sort of like build out that data table because it returns all the values that we need for our table, etc. It returns our pagination um, data or sorting data and it returns our search result if we're searching and it also returns our normal result as a normal view, right? So I'm going to build this out and explain to you what it's doing as I'm doing so. So the first thing I want to do is, is actually create an external method. I'm going to call that, let's make it private, be private function. And I'm going to call it get current query status. All right, and that's going to take two arguments. And it's going to take an object, the first argument, which is going to be that request object. So request. And the second is going to be an array, which is an arg variable we'll created up here. All right. So this method right here, essentially what it's doing, I touched on, bring that back up. I touched on this um, query, this query key and the value status. That is a column within our database, within our user database, right? So we can actually filter the result based on that status. So I mentioned there's currently four different status in that are four different value status for that column, which is pending, active, and lock, and suspension. So we can query the database based on that status column, or we can return the amount of result based on that status. So this is what this method right here is doing. I want to be able to do that so I can get the correct amount of result based on certain conditions. and. This goes back to how you design your database from scratch. Because if you have all of this in mind, you can design a database that reflects exactly what you want it to do, right? So we're going to have a table or a column within each of our database table that's called status. That's going to allow us to filter down our result to something specific that we want, right? So I think it's best to implement this actual method first so you can see what's, what it's returning. Now we've got our request object and we've got that args, which is going to be this controller, um, that YAML, that's going to be passed straight in. So we know what key and value we've got to work with. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called total records. I'm going to set that to zero. Set to zero like that, right? Now I'm going to create some variables and store these objects in. So the first is going to be request. I'm going to equal that to request in the argument and get the query. Now this is a Symphony component, and I'm going to put a link in the description that details what we're doing with these um, method using the Symphony component. Now I'm going to create a next variable called status, I'm going to equal that to that request, which is this variable request. And I'm going to get a method from that component called get alnum. That's how I pronounce it, I might be wrong. And within that, I'm going to pass in args query, right? So remember, args is this controller YAML configuration file, and we're fetching the query this query right here, which is what we've got right here, All right? I'm gonna create a next variable, it's gonna call search results. I'm going to equal that to request again, which is this variable, and I'm going to fetch that same method again. So it's going to be get alnum. I think I abbreviates to something, but I, I've not really looked at it that much. I'm going to say args, I'm going to say filter alias, which is this searchable um, name attribute, filter alias, right? And I'm going to semicolon. 
then I'm going to check if we're searching. And if we're searching, we can create the conditions and return the amount of searching records that, that's been returned via that search. Or we can return the amount of results based on that condition. So I'm going to say if search results, I'm going to say for i equals zero, semicolon, to say i less than count args filter by and this is also this filter by so at the moment we've only got one index or one item in that array and this is a index array because we've only defined index right so we've got one item in which is the last name but you can imagine if we put in multiple items in we want to loop over that to create our search condition right so it's to be a semicolon i and let's incre increment that so we're going to build our conditions now. So I'm going to create a conditions variable. So I'm going to say conditions equal args filter by at that index, yep, yeah, i. And we're going to say search results, right? That's the condition for our search. And we're going to get the total records. That's going to be total records equal this get or this em because we're referencing now to our crude class or entity manager so we can get our crude object. So we're going to get get crude and there's a method that we I think we, we've not created yet that we need and it's going to be count records right and that's going to take the conditions in. So it's going to return the amount of records based on that particular conditions. So if we're searching our database via the last name, we type that last name in and it comes up with four records, like four person in that database with that same last name, it's going to return four results, so, right? That's basically what this is doing. And within that count records method, the first argument is the condition and also takes a second argument which is going to be filter by uh, the current index, just like so, right? Then that's to do with the search. Now we need to work on the normal query as if we're not searching, we just want to get the result based on the actual status of our normal query. So I'm going to say else if, else if, status which is this status or query status right we're going to say create a condition say conditions equal args query and that should be wrapping to a an array because our conditions is an array right so let's create that semicolon so args and I'll set that to whatever query that is that get appends to the URI, right? So the query is going to spit out status equal, for example, you know, URL, you might see something like this. Status equal active. Let's spell that properly. Yeah, status equal active. And that will return a bunch of result based on whatever active user we've got in our in our database. So this is what's going to append to our URL or our URI. And let's get the total records based on this particular condition. It would be this em get crud and we want to fetch that count records method. Which is count records. And that's just going to take in the conditions because the second argument within this method is optional, right? So we only need the conditions within this count records. And we're going to say else, else if we're not querying by status, let's just return all the rec records in that database. So I'm going to say conditions set that one empty array because there's no conditions let's just return everything let's just say total records 
that's going to equal this em get crud that's going to be count records and again we're going to pass that conditions in which is just an empty array which means let's return all the results that we've got all right and all we then need to do is return these values we're going to return an array and the first one we're going to pass in the array is the conditions right and the second one is the total records just like that so now we've created this method back up into our final search and paging the first thing i'm going to do is use a php function called list list and what this list I'll, let's put our mouse over it it says list assign variables as if there were an array so just like how we've returned these variables down in this method we're going to list them out exactly the same in order so we've got conditions as we call your yeah, conditions and total records and we're going to equal that method which is get current status we're going to pass in those two arguments which is our request and the arguments and the args just like so so now we've got the actual value within these two variables that's coming from these methods we can then use it to propagate the actual propagate the correct classes to get the actual results that we want right so let's carry on building out this actual method and i've got two classes that, that i've created externally i want to put a link in the description so you can go and watch them to get a little bit more context behind those two classes and they're going to be the sortable and the paginator class there's going to be a card in the video at this point so you could click it you could visit those videos and watch how i've done them they're very simple class the they're, they're utility classes that is not absolutely tied to this component they're just there for us to use them right so the first one i'm going to create a variable or create an object of that sortable class i'm going to store it in this variable called sorting so it's going to be sorting equal new sortable and this requires that sort column um, array from our controller yaml file which is this um, array right here so we're going to pass that in and it's going to come through args sort columns just like that that's the only argument that this class requires right now the next variable i'm going to create is going to create an object of our paginator so i'm going to say paging paging equal new paginator paginator class and this class requires three argument three arguments yeah and the first is going to be the total records and that's going to come from this variable within this list function so we'll just put total variable total records i should say and you can imagine we're passing the exact ver we're passing the exact amount of records to our paginator so that can keep up with what we're actually doing so if we were querying via a status we need that record so we can pass to our paginator so it knows how much records uh, we've got in our database so it can then calculate accordingly to show us the right amount of pages based on how many page we've set or how many um, records per page we set right so that's what that is doing and the second argument it, it needs is the records per page let say records per page just like that and the third argument is a method from our request object and i'm going to pass that in so it's going to be request it's going to be query and it's that get int and we're going to pass in page as a, as a first argument and one as a second argument now i'm going to put link links in the description um, that's going to be folded onto these method onto, onto the symphony website so you can get a better description of what these are doing right and all we're sort of like getting is our current page we're getting the current page as an integer 
So the next thing I need to do is I need to create some more variables and assign them some, some values within an array. So I'm going to create a next one called parameters. And that's going to equal empty array for now. And the next one is going to be optional, be an empty array for now. And these are going to contain our query segment or a segment of our query that we need to build out our pagination and add stuff like order by and sort of and sort by. Right. So I'm going to build this out so you can see what it's doing. So the first is going to be the limit. And that's going to be set to records per page. Records per page. And remember, these values are coming from the controller config. Um, that YAML file or controller that YAML file right and the second is going to be the offset I'm going to say that's going to be coming from our pagination class our paginator class so there's a method in here that's called get offset again for more context with these two classes please see those other videos to see how I've implemented them how I've implemented them the very simple classes right and it's going to get the offset right so down into our next variable optional we're going to say order by and we're going to get this from our sorting class so we just say sorting and we're going to just get column and these are method within that class again very simple classes and i'm going to concatenate the order onto this so i'm going to concatenate with a space I'm going to say sorting get direction just like that's a method just like so now the next bit I want to do is filter through what I'm searching filter through results based on search or just regular results so just like what we've implemented down here where is it in in this method right here we're going to do something similar as well so we're going to say if request query get all num that's going to be args to be the filter alias right we're going to say search get the search request what are you searching for right so we're going to store that into the search request variable we're going to get the value using the symphony component. So it's going to be equal request query get all num and it's going to be from that filter alias. So whatever value is in that input, in that search input, we're storing it within the search request variable. Like so. So we're going to say for i equals zero i less than count args filter by because as i was saying this filter by is an array right so we can iterate over it so semicolon i increment right then we're going to create our search conditions so i'm just going to say search conditions that's going to equal to args or an array which contains args that's going to be a filter by filter by at current index and that's going to be equal to the search request just like so right now we want to store that result in a variable called results so i'm going to say results equal this so to be find by search which is a next method within this particular class and this contains two arguments so it's going to be args filter by and that's going to second argument is going to be that search conditions just like that so that's if we're searching is going to search via the last name and return those results 
based on the condition of if we've got that data or not. Now, if we're not searching, we simply just want to return all the data and we're going to create the conditions for that. So we're going to create a new variable called query conditions. And all we want to do is merge this additional conditions with our conditions coming from our, our get query status method. All right, so I'm going to say array merge. It's going to be args additional conditions and merge it with our conditions just like that and then we just want to create a similar um line of code that we did right here so we're going to create a variable called results and we're going to store that normal query in and we're going to be using this find by method so we're going to pass in all those arguments and the first is going to be the selectors which is going to come from our selectors right here right by default it returns an empty array which means returns all return all columns so we're going to say selectors the second argument is going to be the conditions so I'm going to pass in the query conditions that we've created right up here. The third argument in this particular method is going to be the parameters. So I'm going to pass in the parameters, which is what we've defined right here. Yeah, and that's going to deal with our, our um, pagination. And the third method is going to be the optional um, argument that we've created, optional verb that we've created. That's going to do all of our order by um all about whatever column or and descending or ascending we can attach that to it like what we've done right here just like that just play that properly be fine bye just like that and then i want to return all of this result into an array so i'm going to say return an array and i'm going to pass all the values in and the first is going to be the results, which is either one of these variables based on whatever conditions we've got or based on whatever, are based on if we're searching or just returning normal results. So it's just going to be results, come out, then I want to get the current page and that's going to come from our paging object or our paginator. So to be paging dot get page which is a next method within that class the next one is from the paging as well and i want to get the total pages get total pages and this is all to do with our pagination bit right the next one we want to get is the total records right we're just going to pass that straight in the next set we want to get is all from our, from our, from our sorting object to say sorting and we want to get the method that says sort directions or sort direction the next one is going to be sorting it's going to be sort descending and ascending yep the next one is going to be sort and it's going to be get class and it's going to be sorting get column and it'll be sorting get direction just like that now again i beg you to reference reference that sortable class that we created in the description below so you can get a little bit more context on what this class is doing. It's a very small, simple class, and it's not doing anything extravagant apart from allowing us to create sortable columns, all right? And that's pretty much the end of this method. It's returning all the values that we created. You can see it's got an helper function which returns the, res returns the amount of results based on a particular conditions. Based on a con based on the conditions.
right? We're defining our pagination, we're building our sorting, we're searching, are we returning that result all within this one method? It's not big, it's just very simple in what it's doing, right? So now I can come back to my data table and then I can mess about with this actual method because now we've got that data repository which we're going to pass into this create method which is going to be this actual um, repository method and it's going to be returning all of these results which we're going to be storing as properties for this particular um, data table class so all we're going to do that is I'm going to use that list function again and list them out as if they were defined within that array so I'm going to say list and that's going to equal to that data repository argument, which is going to be that object that's going to be passed in, just like so. And let's come back and forth, and we're going to list them out. So the first one is going to be the results. Are we going to be naming that one as this data options, right? Now, the second one is going to be the current page. So we're going to say this current page. And the third one is going to be the total pages. So we'll say this, total pages. Now the fourth one I believe is the total records. Let's so say this, total records. If I look again, I see we've got total records and now we've got all to do with our um, sorting. So we're going to say, comma, we're going to say this, direction because that one has to do with our direction next one is going to be this sort direction right next one is going to be this you can say call this one TD class because that one is returning the class and next we can say this table column and the last one I believe is this table order and if we check it get column and get direction which is the last two that I've just defined and I've defined it as table column and table order just like that save it and we've now got all the data that we need to now build our data table